I know you've clicked on this video because you're wondering if it is really possible to take absolute control of Abacus directly from inside of MATLAB. If you're anything like me that work most of the time inside MATLAB, I want to do most of the job within MATLAB. But then the question is, can we actually do this? Of course, this is what I want to be talking about in this video to show you how you can run your Abacus model inside MATLAB, run multiple jobs, even post-process your results, plot graphs, generate contour plots, all within MATLAB. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. You see, why this is really important for us to consider is that a lot of students are actually very good with MATLAB and also very good in Abacus. And a lot of times, if you're like me, you want to see if you can use both codes to be able to do the analysis in the way you want to do it. MATLAB is a very powerful programming language and Abacus is a very powerful finite element modeling code. So it makes sense if we can bring the two together in whatever sense possible. So the model that we're going to use throughout to illustrate what we're doing is basically this kind of deal bracket problem. So it's got holes across it. So this holes technically may be points through which you are going to introduce both into the sample. And then it's going to be pulled to the left and to the right. So I've run the simulation. This is the sort of result you're going to get. So the first thing that you can do inside of MATLAB is to submit your job. So the job that we're working with here is called job steel brackets.imp. So in order to submit the job, if you go to the command window here, you have to introduce an exclamation sign. This is the trick. And then we'll basically say Abacus job is equal to, and then they'll put the input file name, which in this case is job steel brackets. Always remember that you don't have to add the IMP extension in order to run your job. The other thing I would want to ask is how many CPUs that I want. So I want four CPUs to run with the simulation. And then I also want to add interactive. The essence of interactive, I want to visualize every step of what is happening during the simulation so that I will not get it wrong. So this is the first task and then you click enter. So what this will do is that it will go in, start running the simulation. So if you see right away here, so it's telling us that Habakkuk has initiated, I'm running the Habakkuk 21 model the number of licenses that are available for me to run the simulation. And then it's running the preprocessor function, the pre, you know, the Abacus preprocessor. And then it's done the analysis. It found that the input file is correct. So it's telling me that now it's running the Abacus standard because this simulation is basically requires Abacus standard to run. So it's running the Abacus standard. And then after that, it should complete and give us a result. So you notice that while it's doing that in my working directory right inside of Habakkuk, it's also putting in all the necessary files that I need with this simulation. So this brings us to the end. So it's finished up. And then we have this information telling us that actually the job has been completed. So exactly the same thing you'll see inside of Habakkuk is also being done inside of MATLAB. And we can actually visualize what's happening right inside of MATLAB. So the second thing that we can also do is to visualize the result that we want. So again, the command you need to use is Abacus, but there is a dedicated module for visualizing. So it's like the post-processing module inside of Abacus. It's called the Abacus Viewer. A lot of time, most users only know of the CAE, but then there's a viewer that runs behind it that visualizes the results. I'm going to call only the viewer, and I'm going to tell you which database, which output database that it wants to use to do this. And that's the best database that we have just run, so still, bracket.odb. So that's the, the database and then we enter. So instantly it loads the viewer and then we can go ahead and look at the result and see what we can get. So this is how you can call up this visualization module inside of MATLAB and then quickly look at your result. If you're happy with everything, then you can close that. Now the third thing that we can also do right within MATLAB is to call a Python script. So let's say you've got a Python script that contains every sequence of instruction you want to do in your model. And then you want to just go ahead and run it inside of Abacus. So we can do that again with the exclamation sign Abacus CAE. Again, you can call the CAE if you want to see what is happening. You can also not call the CAE. So in the first instance, we're going to call the CAE environment. And then the next command is the script that we want to use. And within this environment, I already have a script, which I call UD script Python. So I'm going to call that UD script. So that's basically a Python script that operates and creates unidirectional composite model. So that's the instruction and we click enter. So what it will do again is it will load up Abacus CA environment and then run the whole process of the script that we want. So you can see immediately it has done that. And then we can go ahead and look at the result that we want. 
So this is basically the, some, the problem that we're trying to solve. And we are doing all that by using MATLAB. Okay, so the next thing that we can do is still run the same Abacus script. However, we want, don't want to load up this GUI environment, this CA environment, because like you see in the last example, it just flashed, showed us what was happening and concluded. So we might as well not call it. And once we've done our processing and created all the models, we can go back and load up one GUI environment and everything would work. So how do we do that within MATLAB? So you call of that command Abacus CA, but what we are going to add is this no GUI option. So basically what it's saying is that we are going to still use Abacus CA environment. However, the graphical user interface, which is the Abacus CA environment, is not going to be called up. So we've got that command and then you click enter, it runs and it comes up with basically. So it tells us, okay, how many licenses have been done. And right at this point, it's finished. So we don't really visualize and see anything. This is really important. If you're going to do a batch processing of multiple actions, all you need to do, just run the whole process, execute the script without calling up CA environment, and then it gives you the result. Okay, the other thing that we can do is how about post-processing? So maybe there is a kind of post-processing that you want to do inside of Abacus. And you've got a script that can do that. So for example, let's say we want to plot a graph. Also, we want to maybe save a particular image, a particular window of our simulation. How can we go ahead and do that? So I'll just talk you through the script Okay, so this is a script that is going to help us do this. So it's something that I've already pre-written. So basically you get the normal information at the top here about how you import your module. So this section creates the viewport environment that you want to display your result. So this opens an ODB file. So this is something you might have done before. So let's say you've got a sequence of ODB files and you have a file format for that. You can then do that right away from here. So basically this is experiment six in a certain simulation that I've, that I've done and so I'm opening the first one. So by all means, you can open multiple ODB files as, as you would see fit. And so now the first action here is to save that contour plot. And the contour plot I'm showing in this instance is the, the von Mies distribution of this particular simulation. Then the other thing that we try to do here is to create XY data of an energy term. The energy term from this simulation is all the external work done during the simulation. So you already know that this is what the name of the file would be inside the simulation. It would be the same all the time. So we want to, again, save that multiple times from our simulation so that, again, we have a history of what is happening. So that, again, this is what this command is doing here. So this displays the result. And right at the end here, it prints the graph. So how do we do that? So again, we go back to Abacus. Again, the same command that we are using before so the only thing we need to replace here is the read ODB and plot script that we have, okay, and then enter. So what it will do is it will run through and do all the actions that we wanted. And if you notice, these two files have been added to the window. The two files have been added to the windows. And this is coming because of what the script has done. So let's visualize what is going on here. So the first of the files that it's created basically is the the von mistress of this sample on the display. But basically, you can see that without opening Abacus at all, you simply run the script without this no GUI option, and then it gives you the result instantly of that. And this is a result of the graphical plot of energy, the total energy done on the system for that simulation that we shot, just saw earlier on. Again, this was done without us having to open Abacus at all. So we are all doing this, controlling the whole simulation inside of MATLAB. So the final case is where we are running, looking to run multiple um, activities. So for this instance, you probably need to create a sort of script inside of MATLAB and I put together a MATLAB script that can do all the things that we've talked about today in this video. So first, I've got a first job that I run, which is my job one. And then I put this display option to tell me inside of MATLAB, what when the job is completed and then it jumps to job two so if you have multiple jobs you can then put maybe an iterative loop where you add up all your jobs in a batch processing format so that you can go ahead and do that and then the next thing here is a python script running the python script in the no gui mode so that it can create the job for us somewhere in background probably save it for us to subsequently use and analyze now it again outputs to tell us the script has been read and executed and this is where it runs the ODB file. So if you've got a set of ODB files and then you want to post process it. So again, you can do that automatically. And then the final result here is where I want to just open the, the viewer and look at the result. So once we set this up, all we just need to do is to run the script. 
And then it will just go sequence by sequence and we can do all that within MATLAB without having to leave MATLAB and go into Abacus. So the first instance here is doing what we did at the beginning, which is running the first job, which is a job um, steal bracket. So this is the end of the first job. And it's can output that information to say first job completed, just like we asked it to do in the script. And then the next thing we will do, it will go on to the next job and begin to run the second job. So again, we see it is running the second job as, as we expected. Again, the second job has been completed as we expected. And then it jumps on to reading the Python script. So it's done the Python script and it's read the ODB file as expected. So, and then of course, the final thing we have here is the visual, the viewer mode. And instantly it loads the viewer mode for us to then do some kind of, you know, just to see what has happened and, you know, play around with the simulation to just make sure that everything is fine. And so we left our loading Abacus onto the very last action that we wanted and they gave all the results as we wanted. So if this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel. So when contents like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. And also, if you like, you can leave any comments in the comment section of this video. Thank you for interesting this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>